welcome back students to the lecture series of operating system myself mohsumi shah assistant professor of computer science and engineering department narula institute of technology our today's topic is cpu scheduling in previous couple of lecture we discuss about cpu scheduling okay so in the task of selecting a waiting process from ready queue and allocating the cpu to it the uh, central processing unit is allocated uh, to do the selected process by the help of dispatcher okay we will we already saw there are three types of scheduler they are long term mid term and short term scheduler we uh, also discuss about the process uh, states like when a process is created that time it is a new then the process is move from a uh, secondary memory to uh, main memory that time uh, with the help of long term scheduler okay then process move to ready queue or ready state from uh, uh, from ready state uh, when the processor got the cpu and starts execution of program that time the process move into the running state okay uh, after the execution complete the process uh, moved uh, to terminated state and in between uh, while running in between if there are some input output needed that time the process move to uh, 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 waiting state from waiting state it back to the ready queue again okay so these are uh, from uh, uh, secondary memory to main memory uh, that it is uh, with the help of long term scheduler from ready queue to running state that means from ready state to running state uh, it goes uh, with the help of short term scheduler where there is a modular um, uh, name dispatcher which help the context switching okay and uh, from uh, running state to waiting state uh, it is uh, the uh, it is uh, held by a mid term scheduler okay and we saw there are couple of uh, scheduling algos are there okay like first come first serve okay that is same than a uh, first in first out okay that is uh, very much uh, there are uh, it is very much simple fair but it have performance are poor okay here the average uh, queuing time may be long okay so uh, what uh, are the average queuing and uh, residence time for this scenario how do the average queuing and residence time depending on ordering of this process in the queue okay we will be discussing this in our problem okay so the first come first serve scheduling is the simplest scheduling algorithm but it can cause the uh, short processes to wait for a long process okay and uh, there is a shortest job uh, for scheduling algo is there okay it is uh, probably the optimal okay it's provide the shortest average waiting time and uh, implementing the shortest job for scheduling it is difficult uh, okay however because of p um, detecting length of the uh, next cpu burst time is difficult okay and the shortest uh, job first algorithm is a special case okay of the general priority scheduling algorithm okay and which is simply allocated to the cpu to the highest priority process so both the priority and shortest job scheduling may suffer from starvation and aging is a technique uh, which prevent the starvation uh, we already discussed about the round robin problem scheduling algo it is more appropriate uh, for time sharing uh, system okay uh, and round robin scheduling allocate the cpu uh, uh, mm, 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 the cpu the first process uh, in the ready queue for mm, suppose uh, they provide uh, a queue time unit okay uh, or suppose uh, 3 millisecond or 4 millisecond where the queue time is the time quantum so after this time quantum unit is exceed the process is not uh, executing the current process it will preempt it and the process next okay which is next in the ready queue will be moved 
So the major problem is uh, selection of the time quantum. If the time quantum is too large, uh, the round robin scheduling is uh, uh, degenerated at first come first serve. Okay. If uh, we have to select the time quantum such a way that it is not uh, similar to first come first serve, okay, it is much more effective. If the time quantum is too small, then also the scheduling overhead in form of context switching. Okay, th that time the context which time can exist. Uh, the first come first serve algorithm is non preemptive and the round robin is preemptive. The shortest job uh, and priority are the non preemptive as well as the shortest remaining time first, or there is another priority which is also preemptive scheduling. We all, so, uh, today we will discuss about uh, we solve a problem okay uh, and check uh, for a particular problem okay if we uh, use it first come first serve scheduling algo what is the result if we uh, use uh, uh, shortest job first algo okay what are the difference okay we um, use uh, several algos okay like round robin shortest remaining time first and check um, the uh, difference okay and we will search uh, which one is better okay so here four processes are there their arrival time is also given and their burst time okay the service time uh, uh, and burst time or execution time are same okay so you can say okay they are uh, these are the process one two three four or p1 p2 p3 p4 okay p1 p2 p3 p4 four processes are there their arrival time is given and their burst time is also given service time is means burst time okay so now first we have to draw the nat chart okay so from ready queue the first process is p1 so at 0 millisecond p1 starts his execution its burst execution time is 8 that means it take 8 millisecond so here the P1 finishes when time quantum times this is 8. So from 0 to 8, P1 execute. That time, okay, uh, one by one, another process arrive in the ready queue. So when P1 completed, we will search for the next process in ready queue. So P2 is there, it come at 1 millisecond and its execution time is 4. So at 8 millisecond p2 starts his execution and it takes 9 10 11 12 so it takes 4 millisecond because its execution time is service time is 4 so at 12 millisecond p2 finishes when p2 finishes we search for the next process and in ready queue we find p3 is in next so p3's execution time is service time is 9 so from 12 plus 9, P3 executes. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay. So P3 executes in this time span. Okay. At that time, this P1, P2 already terminated and P4 is waiting. Okay. After 3 milliseconds, P4 arrive and from 3, it waited until 21. At 21 millisecond, 3 processes terminated after execution then p4 got the chance okay p4 got the processor and starts the execution is service time is 5 so p4 takes 21 plus 5 that means 26 millisecond now check the average waiting time okay we already uh, discussed the average waiting time is starting time minus arrival time okay and the time in between when the process exit from the running state and again move back to the running state that time like if a process suppose p1 this is non preemptive process so whenever a process comes it uh, takes uh, the processor for the whole time it's after execution complete it finishes and it move the processor will uh, switch to next process so the average process of p1 is it's starting time is 0 and its arrival time is 0 so 0 minus 0 okay and uh, 
वेटिंग टाइम ऑफ पी टू इज इट स्टार्ट एट इट्स एग्जीक्यूशन स्टार्ट एट एट एंड इट्स अराइवल टाइम इज इन रेडी क्यू इज वन सो एट माइनस वन ओके पी थ्री स्टार्ट इज एग्जीक्यूशन एट ट्वेल्व एंड इट्स अराइवल टाइम इज टू सो ट्वेल्व माइनस टू एंड फॉर पी फोर इट स्टार्ट इज एग्जीक्यूशन एट ट्वेंटी वन मिली सेकेंड एंड इट्स अराइवल टाइम इज थ्री मिली सेकेंड सो ट्वेंटी वन माइनस थ्री सो दैट इज जीरो सेवन टेन एटीन so 35 divided by number of process so the average waiting time is 8.75 millisecond okay if we use first come first serve substitution algo for the particular scenario then the result is 8.75 millisecond now with the same problem if we uh, use uh, uh, shortage job scheduling algo shortage job first scheduling algo we have to check what happened okay so the values are same okay there are four process p1 p2 again p3 and p4 so we have to follow shortage job first so first at 0 millisecond only one process is there p1 okay for the particular same problem on at 0 millisecond at the starting time only one process is there because p2 p3 p4 comes after 1 millisecond 2 millisecond and 3 millisecond sequentially oh they come one by one so at 0 millisecond only one process is there and shortage of first is also a non preemptive scheduling in non preemptive scheduling we know that the process as not uh, switch the cpu until it finishes so at 0 millisecond p1 starts as is finishes at 8 millisecond okay so now at 8 millisecond all the three process arrive okay because p2 comes at 1 p3 p2 comes at 1 millisecond p3 comes at 2 millisecond p4 comes at 3 millisecond so after 8 millisecond when we look at the ready queue then p2 p3 p4 all the three processes are there and their service time is 495 now we can use the shortest job for scheduling algo so the shortest job uh, scheduling algo says the shortest job is p2 p2's execution time is the shortest so p2 starts p2 finishes okay from 8 to 12 it takes 4 millisecond and it finishes okay so at 12 milliseconds they are reside in ready queue now check p3's execution time is 9 and p4's execution time is 5 so p4 is the shortest so in first come first serve we take sequentially p1 p2 p3 p4 but here we for the particular problem we take p3 first okay so uh, p4 first because p4's execution time is 5 okay so now p4 executes p4 takes 5 milliseconds so 12 to 17 p4 executes and lastly when 17 millisecond all the three process executes there is only one process having service time 9 so lastly p3 executes and it takes 26 millisecond okay now we have to calculate the average waiting time so p1's execution time is 0 minus 0 p2's execution uh, arrival time sorry so average time is uh, p1's arri arri average waiting time is it's starting at 0 and its arrival time is 0 so 0 minus 0 for p2 average waiting time is starting time is 8 arrival time is 1 so 8 minus 1 for p3 average waiting time is starting time is 17 Okay, P three starting time is seventeen, arrival time is two, so seventeen minus two. Okay, and P four starting time is twelve, arrival time is three, so twelve minus three, that is nine. So that is thirty one divided by four because we have when we have to calculate the average waiting time, we have to uh, sum all the waiting time and divided by number of process so we have four processes as there so average waiting time is 7.75 in previous if we 
follow first come first serve we uh, saw that uh, the average waiting time is 8.25 8.75 here the average waiting time is 7.75 okay so the average waiting time is less so uh, comparing the two algo uh, shortest job first is better okay so now the acer tf scheduling algo okay acer tf is shortest remaining time first algo which is the uh, preemptive version of shortest job first so for the same problem okay for the we take the same snapshot okay here four processes are there p1 p2 p3 p4 and same service time as arrival time is also given okay so p1 p2 p3 p4 arrival times are 0 1 2 3 and service time is 8 4 9 5 now we have to follow srtf how is a tf scheduling algo works at 0 millisecond there is only one process so p1 starts his execution at 1 millisecond one new process arrive so this 1 millisecond it will check okay in this time so it check p1's remaining burst time p1's remaining execution time is its total execution time is 8 it already execute 1 milliseconds so remaining is 7 and at 1 millisecond when a new process p2 arrives its service time is 4 so which one is the shortest p2 P2 having the shortest burst time. So, P2 starts his execution. That time, P1 move to again ready queue. From running uh, mode to it will move back to ready. Okay. So, P2 starts his execution. So, at 2 millisecond, again one new process arrive. Okay. So, at 2 millisecond, we can check. Okay. So, at 2 millisecond, P1's execution time is 7. P to already one millisecond executes so its execution remaining execution time is three okay at t2 time now i consider now p3 come and p3's remaining burst time is p3's execution time is nine so among these three p2 having the shortest burst time so P2 continue at 3 millisecond again when whenever a new process arrive we have to check which one's uh, execution time or service time is less okay so at P3 again one process arrive so that time P1's remaining time is 7 because P1 is not executing P2 is executing so at 3 millisecond P4 arrive okay so at 3 millisecond we have to check p1's remaining execution time is service time is 7 because p1 is not executing it is reside in ready queue p2 is currently executing its total service time is 4 it already execute 2 milliseconds so its remaining time is 2 at current situation okay this current situation its execution time is 2 p3 comes at 2 millisecond but it uh, stay in ready queue so its execution time is 9 and currently p4 comes whose execution time is 5 so among this four process we see that p2 is having the shortest burst time so p2 continues so from 1 to next 4 millisecond that means total 5 millisecond p2 executes okay so one at 2 millisecond we check once again and at 3 millisecond we check again so whenever a process arrive that time we have to check among all the processes which remaining burst time is less we have to switch to that process okay so at 5 milliseconds p1 p2 both p1 execute 1 millisecond its remaining time is 7 
P2 already executed finishes okay so P2 completed now among this three seven millisecond nine and five P4 having the shortest burst time so P4 starts his execution next okay after P2 it take five millisecond so from five to five at ten millisecond P4 finishes now at 10 millisecond we have to check the remaining burst time of p3 is 9 and the remaining burst time of p1 is 7 so uh, p1's execution time is shortest so p1 got the chance so from 10 to 17 p1 executes okay at 17 millisecond p1 finishes p4 finishes p2 finishes only one process is there that is p3 so p3 starts his execution okay now we have to calculate the average waiting time p1's average waiting time is starting time minus arrival time if starting time is 0 minus arrival time and look at 1 millisecond p1 exit from running state and again it got the chance at 10 millisecond so from 10 to 1 that time when p2 and p4 executes p1 wait so we have to calculate that, that value also. So 10 minus 1, this 9 millisecond also, P1 is waiting for the processor. Okay. So uh, P1's average waiting time is 9. Now for P2, its starting time is 1 and arrival time is 1. So 1 minus 1, that is 0. Now P4, P4 starting time is 5. Arrival time is 3. Okay. The starting time is 5. Arrival time is 3. So, that is 2. Again, P3. Starting time is 17. Arrival time is 2. So, 15. So, 15 plus 2. Okay. 15 plus 2 plus 9 okay 17 26 so that is 26 so that is 8.5 okay. so the answer is 8.5 now uh, the same problem we check again and now uh, the process name is values are same arrival time is also given and service time is also given the same and we have to follow round robin round in round robin we have to set a time quantum for this particular problem we set a time quantum 4 that means after 4 millisecond p1 switches from 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 and again it will repeat okay and again it will repeat the circle until and unless the processes are finishes and terminated so first p1 starts his execution is service time is 8 so but time quantum is 4 set time quantum set is 4 so 0 to 4 second p1 executes now it switches to p2 now for, uh, from 4 millisecond to 8 millisecond p2 executes okay p2's service time is 4 so at 8 millisecond p2 finishes his job now p3 starts it take another 4 millisecond and P4 starts, it take another 4 millisecond. Again, P1 got the chance because all the process have one first time it will complete it and the same circle will repeat it. So, again P1 starts his execution. After first, it have remaining burst time is 4. So, from 16 to 20, P1 executes. After first cycle, P2's remaining bus service time is 0 so p2 already terminated we no, don't need to execute p2 because p2 is not there it is finishes its job and terminated okay now p3 at first attempt it uh, execute 4 millisecond at its remaining service time is 5 so after p1 p3 gets its chance it take 5 okay and the time quantum is 4 so from 20 to 24 it executes and its remaining burst time is 1 
okay at two attempt it completed four and four eight millisecond but it have total service time nine so one millisecond till remaining now again in first attempt uh, p4 execute four millisecond and its remaining time is one okay and se second attempt it takes from 24 to 25 it takes only one millisecond because p4 need is to execute the process in one millisecond after one millisecond p4 finishes so it terminated now at 25 milliseconds all the three process executes p1 p2 p4 only p3 remains so p3 starts its execution and it needs one millisecond service time so from 25 to 20 p3 again executes so now check the average waiting time for p1 the average waiting time is 0 minus 0 and at 4 millisecond it exit and again it comes at 16 so 16 minus 4 okay so it's execute waiting time is average waiting time is 12 for p1 for p2 p2 starting time is 4 arrival time is 1 so 4 minus 1 this is the 3 this is the average waiting time for p2 okay this is p1 p2 for p3 p3 starts execution start at 8 okay and arrive at the tool so 8 minus 2 and again at 12 millisecond it exit and got the chance at 20 so 20 minus 12 that time p3 is waiting in ready queue for the processor so that is its waiting time again at 24 millisecond p3 exit and got a chance at 25 so 25 minus 20 that one millisecond p3 is waiting so 6 8 8 and 1 okay so the 15 is the waiting time for p3 for p4 p4 starts his execution 12 arrival time is 3 so 12 minus 3 9 plus uh, 9 now p4 exit at 16 and came back at 24 so 24 minus 16 that time also p4 waits okay so 9 and 18 17 17 9, 9, 9, 35 plus 12, 35 plus 12, 47 divided by 4, so the result is 11.75, okay, if you use round domain scheduling algo, for this, uh, so look, uh, for the same problem, if we uh, use first come first, uh, the average waiting time is 8.75, if we use shortest job first the average waiting time is 7.75 if we use shortest remaining time first so the average waiting time is 8.5 and if we use round robin so average waiting time is 11.75 so the in shipping scheduling algo okay there are two algorithms one is time sharing second one is real time time sharing is prioritize uh, credit base where process most credit in schedule next the credit subtracted when timer interrupts occur and when the credit equals to zero then another process is chosen when all process have credit zero then we have to recreate the occur based on the factor including priority and history and in real time what happened it is uh, if it is a soft real time then a postfix IB compliant of two classes. One is either first come first serve or round robin. The highest priority runs the first. Okay. And how do you decide which algorithm is best for a particular environment? So uh, for deterministic model, it's take a particular predetermined workload and define the other performance of each algorithm. Okay. So for uh, different, different uh, uh, 
problem the algorithms uh, okay and using queuing model like the actual process execution there are okay in tape drives like uh, uh, for simulation okay okay some process having follow first come first serve sometime it's follow shortest job uh, okay so based on, on the problem we have to decide which is perform better okay so we have to look number of different scheduling algo which one work best application that is depending upon the general purpose uh, in general purpose operating system it will use based on priority or round robin or preemptive and in real time operation it uh, will use uh, priority with no preemption okay so uh, thank you students for listening i hope all of you understand the total cpu scheduling okay in previous lecture also we will be discussing and today we will be discussing the same problem with uh, different different algo so i think uh, all of your doubts are clear if you have any query you can contact me and see these are some reference books okay uh, feel free to contact me at any time okay thank you